All right, let's turn this baby on and see what we get. And one of the things is we got to take this off. There we go. It makes it a little bit better. All right, so when we turn this thing on, what you see is, is that this scale up here only goes to 25 watts. And that's because this thing has auto scaling. So when I key up and it immediately jumps to 125 because I'm putting about 50 watts in. You can see that down here in your forward power. Now this is the SWR and power meter. It's a CV, CQV, I'm sorry, SWR 508. And I was contacted by the folks at Banggood and they asked if I would do a video review of this product. And of course I said yes, so here it is. That means I was sent this free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who's triggered by sponsored videos, it's best you go watch some cat stuff. All right, so you can see there's a call sign up here and it is BG5CQV. And I guess that's where the name of this device comes from. And uh, I guess he's the designer. You can change that, but before we go looking at the menu, let's just key this up again. So there's a couple things you can see. One is that we have a power bar up at the top, if you're the type of person who likes to look at a meter like that, or you can see the number down here. And our max power is 5.9. REF is for reflected power, which is zero. I'll show you how I've got this set up. It's going into a dummy load. That means 50 or so is making it to the antenna, making it 100% efficient. We have an SWR of one to one. We'll test this out with SWRs other than one-to-one -one so you can see what it does. But uh, let's take a quick look at the menu and I'm gonna use a stylus because I got greasy fingers. So when I do that, I have a couple of different menu items. One is we have a brightness meter and I can drag this around and make it dimmer or brighter or whatever. I'm not sure which one would be better for the video. Let's just drop the brightness down to there. Hit return and we go back. There's something called off time. Now you can have this thing plugged in via USB cable and use it that way. It also has an internal battery and we'll look at that. But right now it's set to turn off after 10 minutes of inactivity, which is pretty cool. Uh, then we have an SWR alarm right now. It's set for two to one and we can adjust this by going up or down. So like we can go down to 1.5 for the alarm to go off. And it's just an audible tone, and we'll hear that once we test this out, because we're going to hook it up to, I think, around a 3 to 1 uh, load that I've got. There is a calibration setting, and this means that you can apply a calibration to your forward or reverse. Now, we're going into a 50-ohm dummy load, and it looks pretty good, but maybe that changes with frequency, or maybe yours is off a little bit, and you want to use this calibration. And then you would just adjust it accordingly pretty handy feature a lot of times you'll see like a little set screw or something like that on the front of some SWR meters uh, that you can adjust and then last you can come in here then you can change the name and let's do that real quick enter return and look at that it changed it at the top let's just go ahead and key it up one more time see what we have I'm pushing in about 50 watts and I'm using an older Yesu radio it's an 847 I believe and if I turn this thing all the way up, let's do that. The radio says it's putting out 100, but it's only getting about 90 here. And that probably has something to do with the uh, radio being 20-some years old. But uh, I'm not overly worried about that. All right, let's take another deeper look at this and take a look at how I have it set up. All right, well, you might be the type of person who's concerned about the setup and wondering what we have. Here we have a 200-watt, I think it's 200-watt, uh, dummy load. And it is a tap dummy load, so you can actually pull readings off of here if you want. But we just have the radio coming into the back of the device. And it goes into the TX port. And then here you can see we have a power button to turn it on and off. And there's our USB-C charging port, which is pretty handy. And then the antenna wire, which is this red one comes out and it goes into our dummy load pretty basic device there's not a whole lot more to it than that let's get this over here there we go so here's a little dummy load that i made and i have a bunch of resistors here in parallel i think that's what they call that Anyhow, when we take a look at it each one of these is a thousand ohms so we should be getting somewhere around 250 ohms which would be about a five to one i have no idea if that's the real values of these or not and if that's what we're going to get but let me go ahead and set it up. Okay, we turned the radio down to 5 watts because those resistors are 3 watts each. So I don't want to overdo it here. But let's go ahead and key up. And you might be able to hear that SWR audible alert. And it looks like we're actually getting around a 4.5. So that's, that's kind of what we expected. 
taking a look at it, we have six watts uh, power coming out. We have 2.4 reflected, and I don't want to do anything too bad, so I'm not going to keep that keyed up very long. It's low power, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But we're looking at about a 60%, 59% antenna efficiency. Okay, for the next set of tests, what we're going to do is use this Nano VNA connected up into the SWR and power meter. When we take a look at that, it's just connected into the antenna and the TX. We have channel 0, or S11 measurement, going into the TX. So we're actually going to see if this is a really a 50 ohm input. We're going to feed a signal in. It's going to come out the antenna and back into the Nano VNA, and that should be able to tell us what kind of loss we get in this device, too. When we're done with that, we're going to flip these around, and we're going to measure it in the reverse direction and see how it does. Okay, so here we are connected up to Nano VNA Saver, and what we have here, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, is our sweep control. And we're running a sweep from 1.5 to 55 megahertz, which goes a little bit, about a half of a megahertz below uh, where this thing starts, and about a half a megahertz above where it stops. What I've done is I've set this thing for 25 uh, segments. And that gives us a data point every 21.2 kilohertz. Not too bad. So I ran a sweep, and what we can see here is we do have some SWR coming back, but it's pretty good. Uh, best around the 7 megahertz or the 40-meter uh, band. If I come down here, we're at 1.008 to 1. And then over here at the worst, which is um, actually higher than the 6-meter band. So if we just click in the middle of the 6-meter band, our SWR is 1.09 to 1. So I think that that's completely achievable and not a problem. Let's take a look at our insertion loss. Okay, taking a look at our insertion loss and where markers just where it was left before. If I take a look over here at marker 1, what we have here is negative 0.156 dB of loss. This line looks like it's pretty far down, but that's just really the scaling of the chart that we're taking a look at. And then over here at, uh, I guess this is 160 meters at our lowest, it is 0.116. So not much loss in there, pretty good SWR. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the ports so we can re measure this thing in the reverse direction. Okay, I switched the ports and I ran the sweep and we actually got a little bit better. It's 0.112 dB and that just might be how tight I tightened the cable. And if I come all the way down here where it's about the worst in the 6 meter band, we are uh, 0.144 dB of loss. Let me go ahead and switch this over to the SWR sweep. And the SWR sweep is about exactly the same as where we were before. If we take a look here, we are at 1.098 to 1. And let's come down here to the 160 meter band. And we look like we're about 1.078 to 1. So the device is pretty good, uh, pretty happy with it. All right, so that's the meter. Uh, one of the things you might be wondering is, is that, well, what does this thing actually cost? I'll have a link below where you can pick this up from Banggood, and it's about 109 bucks right now, and I think that's shipping included. So it's actually really well-priced, and it might take a little bit of time to get to you shipping from China. I think this one took about eight days to get here. But, uh, you know, for 100 bucks, this might be the best SWR meter that I've tested. Really like it. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.